UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is deeply concerned over the impacts of climate change. Reports show that the global ocean has warmed faster over the century than at any time in the past 11,000 years. Guterres says the threat is particularly severe for the over 900 million people who live in coastal regions with low heights. Mega cities on every continent are also expected to face serious impacts. Rising seas threaten lives and jeopardize access to water, food and health care. Saltwater intrusion can decimate jobs and the entire economies in key industries like agriculture, fisheries and tourism. The consequences of all of these are unthinkable. Low-lying communities and the entire countries could disappear forever. We would witness a mass exodus of entire populations on a biblical scale. And we would see ever fiercer competition for fresh water, land, and other resources. Leaders say the fight against climate change is very different from other conflicts, since you can't directly stop it. Many countries are trying to adapt, but with limited resources. As climate change catalyzes new waves of activism around the world, threats and violence against women and environmental defenders is increasing, especially against indigenous women. Their protection must be an integral part of the global agenda for peace building and for sustaining peace. Excellencies, we know the risks and we see the uncertainties and instabilities that we are going to face. And we can't doubt that these will open the door for conflict and dispute, endangering global peace and security. And where this door is open, this Council has a responsibility to act. It is critical to invest in prevention today rather than address the implications of food scarcity and mass migration tomorrow. We can agree it makes sense morally and financially. There is a call for the international community to find innovative instruments. Some of the proposals include creating a global voluntary fund. Chao Mgono, CGTN. We're joined by Mathika Mwenda, Executive Director of Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance, who is attending COP28 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Mwenda, welcome to the program. The UN is warning that low-lying communities and entire countries could disappear forever as a result of sea level rise. What is the scope of the problem? Um, thank you. Um, Yes, uh, I think um, the alarm sounded by uh, the UN Secretary General is uh, just being repeated uh, elsewhere because the impacts of climate change are not now a far away phenomenon, but it's uh, something which uh, people in the islands uh, in the world are living with. And they are, they are coming even earlier and more intense than uh, the, the scientific prediction, particularly the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Sixth uh, Assessment Report. And so it's a, a worrying trend. It is really forcing many people from their, 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 uh, their countries. And uh, the greatest worry is that uh, the leaders uh, in the world are still gone blind. They have uh, assumed the death here on uh, really ensuring that uh, they respond to science and urgently that is according to the UN Secretary General and put uh, the necessary resources to ensure that um, they support those communities to rebuild their livelihoods and also address these impacts of climate change based on uh, on science and the imperatives of climate justice. Well, Mr. Mwanda, you briefly touched on it. The UN chief says that this problem must be addressed urgently. My question to you is what do you think needs to be done right now and how? What needs to be done is uh, first and foremost to find a way of uh, helping those communities 
uh, to adapt to, to the impact and uh, to really rebuild and have hope on their future. One of the ways is, uh, as we speak now, the global community uh, adopted uh, a, a, a loss and damage um, uh, 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 framework and a facility during the COP27 in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt. And so there is one thing in adopting adoption of a framework, and the other thing is uh, making it operational. We know that there are efforts to do that, there are consultations, uh, a committee has been established to do so. But uh, our worry is that uh, the global community uh, 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 usual way of pro procrastination and usual ways of ig ignoring uh, this, uh, some of these frameworks, the way we have seen with the Green Climate Fund and other funds which are stamped of money, we want to ensure that it's not only the functionality of the fund, but also putting sufficient resources into it in terms of climate finance to ensure that uh, that uh, that fund is able to support uh, such communities which are really facing extinction because of the rising sea levels. And but also we need to see a robust engagement in terms of what to do. There is a lot of migration happening and uh, we will see this uh, phenomenon happening and we see uh, we, we don't see sympathy from the migrants from the north. Some of them are harassed. Some of them are, are, are mistreated. Some of them are, sh are shipped into their, into, in, into their, back to their countries to face more uncertainty. So we need, in addition to the, to the facility, we need really to see the world living to the reality of climate crisis, listening to science, but more importantly, ensuring that there is sufficient resources, both multilateral and bilateral, to put into supporting the victims of this problem, which these people did not cause.